Welcome to our Sound for Video session. Today is the 15th of April, 2017. In this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about AES digital audio and why that matters <laughs> for, um, for production sound. And uh, then we'll also talk a little, I guess we'll nerd out a little bit about microphones as well. I have some new microphones I'm testing here. Um, we'll come back to that at the end. Let's first of all talk about AES digital audio. So AES-3 is a standard that has actually been around for quite some time. It's a standard for transmitting digital audio between professional audio gear. And um, it, the, the way I've come across it and the way and the way it's kind of become interesting to me recently is that I'm now shooting with a couple of cameras. Of course, I have the new Panasonic GH5 to replace my three-year-old GH4, which has served me well, but it was time. <laughs> it was wearing out in a lot of physical ways. Um, but then I also have for the corporate video work, uh, um, Blackmagic Design Ursa Mini Pro. And the interesting thing about that camera, the Ursa Mini Pro, is that it has XLR inputs. And when we did our tests recently, the inputs were, you know, the preamps and the analog to digital converters were okay. They weren't awful, but they weren't, um, they weren't as good as a lot of other recorders that are dedicated audio recorders. Obviously not as good as the sound devices from my tests. And uh, I didn't even think as good as the um, like the Zoom F4 and F8 series recorders. I would say it was probably on par with the um, kind of like the Tascam DR uh, 60D Mark II and the 70D. And then also on the Zoom side, probably the H6 and the H5. So it um, wasn't great, but it was not awful. It's definitely usable. Um, I think I did a piece on that a couple of weeks ago. I think some people read it as I didn't like it all at all. I don't think that's such a, the case. <laughs> it's actually not horrible, but it's also not amazing either. So the question is, is when you're working with cameras like that, what are your options? Well, the interesting thing about the Ursa Mini Pro is that those XLR inputs are actually also AES-3 digital inputs. What does that mean? Well, um, I'll put a link here to the Wikipedia entry on AES-3. Again, it's a standard that was developed many years ago, originally, in, I believe, in 1984. And um, it can actually be transmitted. It's, it's digital audio, so it can be transmitted over a variety of different types of cables. In this case, we're going over a standard XLR, three-pin XLR cable, which is the same thing you use for most microphones. And um, we're recording the microphone Actually, the microphone is being fed into the sound device of 633, and then that is feeding the signal out as a digital signal, AES-3, to the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro. So the all the heavy lifting in terms of audio, in terms of preamplification, and analog to digital conversion, as you'll remember, for those of you that took the course, the signal chain we talked about, and I'll show that up here on the screen, um, all of that is happening inside, well, we, the microphone sends an analog signal to the sound device of 633, that preamplifies it, it uh, converts it to, to digital, and then it sends the digital signal to the Ursa Mini Pro. So the Ursa Mini Pro isn't doing anything with the audio except taking the digital stream and lining it up with the picture. And that's really good. <laughs> so now I can have my audio recorder uh, mixer doing the heavy lifting and the high quality audio work and the camera also gets that audio in digital form and just has to line it up with the video. So now I don't have to sync in post and yet I still get all the benefits of my sound devices recorder. So that's where I think um, it's good to just know about this. Most of us are probably not working with this type of gear on a daily basis, but um, someday when you get called up to work on your next uh, film for your favorite director, <laughs> you'll at least know what AES audio is and you'll have the option of doing that. Um, I think this workflow is actually going to be for, not, not so much for feature films. Um, maybe it is, I don't know. I haven't worked on any major feature films, but for me and corporate video, it makes things a little bit easier because we can have the audio already synced up. Now, the other thing that's interesting about AES audio is that each individual output on a single cable can actually transmit two channels of audio. So I can actually output two independent channels. So I could send a stereo mix um, from with a single cable, single XLR cable, from the sound device of 633 to the uh, Ursa Mini Pro. So um, just something really useful to keep in mind. What that means in practical terms is the Ursa Mini Pro could actually record four channels of audio um, with two AES-3 outputs from a device that could actually send four 
um, channels of audio, so that's actually helpful as well. Um, some other things about AES-3 that may be of use, to, uh, you know, just to know about. There are not a lot of microphones. There are actually, it's, it's possible for microphones to also be able to put out an AES uh, digital signal. So what that means in practical terms is, again, all of the signal chain from sound source capture to a capsule to so the first stage of amplification in your microphone to pre-amplification up to line level to digital conversion all happens within the microphone. And um, that's, that's, that's why it's important to understand how the signal chain works so you can actually identify when you have a piece of gear, okay, which parts of the signal chain does this one do? <laughs> and uh, this here, here, for example, the Shep's Super CMIT 2U is actually a digital microphone. I believe it can actually also ask, act as a... Um, can also output analog if you need to do that. So it's a little bit on the more versatile side, but it does do some digital processing itself, some pretty significant uh, noise reduction. So it's kind of an interesting microphone from that standpoint. Not something that, again, most of us would use day to day and partly because of its price, but also even the pros don't generally use this all the time. I think this is more of a special purpose mic. There are some other companies that are making AES output mics. Neumann has a variety of them. You can see a variety of them over at B&H Photo and, and other places where you might look for professional grade mics. Um, again, those aren't very common, but the nice thing about uh, the Sound Devices 633 and several of the other Sound Devices and mixers is that they will put the output AES-3 signals. So um, it's definitely worth looking into if you're going to be working with this type of a camera or you're on a production where that question comes up and uh, if you're helping to make the decisions about what gear to use for that, now you have another option there. So you can offload the delicate process of producing quality audio from the camera and, and use a device that's better suited for that, and yet at the same time still get audio directly into the camera. All right, um, I think that was all that I wanted to talk about on that front, so let's talk about a couple of microphones here. Last week on our Sound for Video session, um, I used this microphone here. I don't know if, I can't remember if I talked about it or not. This is actually an Electrovoice RE50L. This is a reporter's microphone. It's actually an omnidirectional uh, microphone with sort of a longish handle. And uh, this is what's often used for by reporters. The, the interesting thing about this is I'd always thought of reporter's microphones as having a cardioid pickup pattern to help eliminate a lot of the noise around them. But this is a kind of a different approach instead of uh, using the polar pattern to help uh, manage noise. This actually uses the fact that it's a dynamic microphone to manage noise. So what that means is that, well, one of the principles or the kind of the features, if you will, of dynamic microphones is that they don't tend to pick up, they tend to pick up in a relatively small area. <laughs> they just don't have a lot of reach, in other words. Um, they don't have any power. They're, they're, um, it's all sound waves that actually move a diaphragm and uh, remove the capsule and um, that's how they generate the sound. So, or that's how they create the sound signal. So um, this is kind of an interesting mic. The reason I bought this is that they're, uh, we're coming up with uh, Tanab, NAB, and I'll be going and doing a few interviews with um, some people. So I wanted to try a new microphone. The, the challenge that I had with some of the other mics I've used in the past is that handling noise is a big issue. And I've, uh, in my tests with this so far, this handles or manages handling noise very, very well. So. A lot of those other mics, every time you moved it, it seemed like, or the cable shook just the tiniest bit, you would get some handling noise that would be picked up in the recording. This does a great job um, eliminating that. Now, uh, my friend Scott Vanderbilt actually helped me, he came out and shot the, the work I did, or the reviews and the interviews we did at NAB last year. He can't come this year, unfortunately, I'll miss him, um, but he's got some other exciting things going on. Um, so my brother's gonna come this time and uh, we're gonna keep it pretty light this year. And I haven't decided all of the things I'm going to do yet, but here's another thing. Rode sent me their, their Rode Reporter mic. Um, similar principle here. This is an omnidirectional, long-handled, dynamic microphone. And uh, they also were kind enough to send the iXLR. And this just plugs on to the mic like that. And uh, then the other end of the cable runs into an iOS device. So in, in my case, we're gonna run it into an iPhone 7. Now, what we haven't decided yet is whether the iPhone 7 is going to be the camera that we use <laughs> and everything will be synced up and ready to go and it'll be very quick and easy to get that available, you know, those 
those little show floor interviews available. Um, or if we're just going to record the audio to the mic or to the phone and then also shoot with another camera and then sync them up in post. So we'll work through that workflow a little bit. But um, what we may end up doing is bringing the GH5. The nice thing about the GH5, the Panasonic GH5, is that um, for those of you that are not familiar with it, um, while we would still have to sync the audio in post, the nice thing about the GH5 is its in-body image stabilization is very, very good. Of course, that's a bigger sensor than a phone will, so it'll probably do a little bit better indoors in terms of um, dealing with um, not a whole ton of light. Although NAB seems to be lit reasonably well, so I'm not too worried about that. So uh, anyway, we'll we'll come up with some some ideas of what to do with that. Interestingly, the Rode um, also seems to do quite well. I haven't tested this one as extensively as the Electra Voice. Um, this one's a little bit less expensive. I think this retails for about 129. Um, and then the Electra Voice, I think, retails for closer to 200. So they're they're a little different that in terms of price, but um, we'll see how this one does in terms of handling noise and, um, you know, it's overall sound. So those are the two things that I'm looking for there. All right. Oh, incidentally, as, as, while we're speaking about uh, signal chains, um, this is interesting because this is this device here, the iXLR, is a device that essentially does kind of the same thing we're talking about, but of course it doesn't use AES-3. It has its own proprietary interface <laughs> that it's sending. But from a, from a principle standpoint, it's doing the same thing. It's taking the signal, very weak signal, from a dynamic microphone, uh, amplifying it up to line level, converting it to a digital signal, and then sending it to, in this case, an iPhone or an iPad. So it's just good good exercise to, to remember how signal chains work, all the things that are involved in them so that you understand how these devices work, because that makes it easier for you to troubleshoot when things aren't working exactly how you'd like them to. So. There's a quick overview of um, some thoughts, I guess, or a, kind of a primer on uh, digital audio. And I hope that was helpful for you. Go ahead and leave any questions you have down below. Uh, get out there and shoot and record, and we'll talk to you again next week.